It is always an exciting day when we see players return from injury, and we are seeing that with quite a few flames. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. As always, I am your host, Jess Belmosto, and thank you so much for joining me here today. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off of your first purchase. Today, we are going to be talking all about the game against the Ottawa Senators that is taking place tonight at the Saddle Dome as well as some exciting news out of, I guess, the Wranglers, technically, because there are some players returning after starting the first half of the season injured, and we have to talk about the blind side of a trade that we all just heard about uh, from Philly and Anaheim with Jamie Drysdale and Cutter Gauthier, so we will talk about that to wrap up the show. But before we do any of that, please make sure you're subscribed to Locked On Flames wherever you get your podcasts and, of course, on YouTube as well. Locked On Flames is here for you five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are so happy to have you here. With the Flames making a quick pit stop back home, they host their Pride Night tonight against the Ottawa Senators, and I'm excited, typically because, number one, the Flames are home. So they kind of play a more comfortable game, and you're able to kind of tell that they're more comfortable. <laughs> and I think that they, they most of them do perform better at home. Most teams do. That's just how it works. And I'm very interested to see kind of what they come up with for their Pride merch. I think that uh, the auctions that they do are great. I don't think they're going to be doing specialty jerseys because I don't think they technically can. But I wouldn't be surprised if we saw some players with uh, pride tape on their sticks. But back to some on-ice things. The Flames announced that Jan Kuznetsov has been reassigned to the Wranglers, which more than likely means Dennis Gilbert is either good to go or they're still just going to keep rocking with what they've got because he was he still did not make his NHL debut even with Gilbert out. So maybe having him there was, again, just a precautionary measure. Kind of stinks to not have him in the lineup and make that debut because you don't know what you're missing. And I feel like at this point, we have to kind of start talking about Nick DeSimone too because there have been some moments. There have been quite a few moments. And that's a can of worms for another day. But let's let's keep focusing on the good news. Maybe this means Dennis Gilbert is back. I can't imagine he's back after less than a week. But if he is, you know, I hope he is fully ready to go. And I kind of hope they limit his minutes. I don't like how hard he hit his head and how hard it bounced off the ice like that. And just the slow kind of get up reaction. So um, obviously I'm not a doctor. I've only seen some head traumas in real life, but I hope he's feeling better. I hope he's doing all right. And in terms of players to watch tonight, I think the most obvious one here is Jonathan Huberto, just because of how well he has been playing lately. He has four points in his last five games after going nearly an entire month without anything. Now, I understand that this is not where Jonathan Huberto should be at this point in the season. He should be performing at a a much higher uh, level, but that's, that hasn't been the case. And I I feel like we're, we're seeing him click and get going. And I don't know if something happened or if there was kind of like this come to Jesus moment sort of thing, or if it's just been the 130 games that he has played in Calgary and it's just finally he's adjusted to the way Calgary plays. And I'm not going to ask any questions. <laughs> We're going to take it for what it is at this time because I 
I do think that while he is putting up the counting stats, he is still, you know, doing a good job setting up plays as well. So, like, he's he, he's all right. We'll, we'll keep him where he is. And Blake Coleman as well has been a significant contributor to this team. Him and Nazem Kadri both have 30 points in 40 games. That is something I did not see happening at all. I don't think many people saw Kadri getting to that point because there were, was a point like two weeks into the season, not even, where people were melting down and not they just weren't happy with Kadri's performance. But here we are. So <laughs> I think that him and Coleman have really been the Flames' best players this year in terms of consistency. I like what they bring to the ice. I like that they're both... You know, Kadri has absolutely proved himself uh, to play in the top six consistently. And not that Blake Coleman hasn't, but his skill set is something you need for that third, fourth line. More of a third line player right now, I would say, because, I mean, that's where he was in Tampa, but that's because Tampa was so deep. And he's gotten used to those kinds of minutes. But I also think that the Flames' third line is so special with Backland and Mon- Backland, Coleman and Mangiapane. So it's great to see them there. I think that they could go out and be a, a top line too. It's a matter of how, you know, Huska wants to rotate them and play the lines. But I really do like what we've been seeing. And I, I really hope that this continues. And it's something that we can kind of keep an eye on because he does – have six points in his last five games and that's definitely something to pay attention to and kind of hang your hat on right now (laughs) because while things aren't necessarily going as well as people expected at least you're still getting consistent offense there and Andrew Mangiapane I said this last week I really wanted to see him score again and score more and really continue this, I guess, recovery uh, after his shoulder surgery because we weren't, we did not see Andrew Mangiapane last season. We saw a shell of Mangiapane just with that shoulder injury and he needed time to heal as well. So it's great to see him uh, starting to cook again. He has seven points in his last five, five assists and two goals. It again, it's just it's great to see this kind of improvement here. And players are starting to click on a consistent level. And that's what you need to see and what you want to see. But this team, you aren't going to know what the season, the end of the season holds until the end of this season. That is just who this team is. And is this something you really want to shake up right now with their with players returning? Is this something you feel comfortable shaking up? We really don't know until we get there. And that is, again, one of the most frustrating things about this team. But we are going to take a quick break and talk about players returning after injury. And uh, we are going to talk about that right after this. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is super easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same live same game parlays, find bets in the new Explore tab, and make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays and more. I love the FanDuel app because it is super easy to use and to navigate and you can cash out instantly and take your prize to the bank. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. Thank you everyone for hanging out with me today on Locked on Flames. Make sure you're subscribed to the show wherever you get your podcasts and of course on YouTube as well because we've we've still got 40 something games left. We have 41 after the game against the Senator. There's still a lot of time left. And that is a very terrifying thing, but also kind of reassuring to those who are hoping the Calgary Flames make the playoffs. 
And this is also very exciting because there's still time for players like Oliver Shillington to return. Last week, it was announced that he had been assigned to the Calgary Wranglers for a conditioning stint. And then today, it was announced that Kevin Rooney is on waivers. Simply assuming this is so he can play in the AHL and, you know, do his conditioning stint. They can't just assign him to the AHL based on his contract. And, of course, everyone's favorite French-Canadian, Jacob Pelletier, has also been assigned to the Wranglers. This is very exciting. This is all positive. With Jacob Pelletier returning, you are injecting something so special into the lineup. It is that infectious personality on top of the speed and the skill that he has. And you are going to be... You have to manage those expectations, especially with him returning from an injury at this point in the season. So like he is obviously behind in, I guess, shaking the dust off, but he's also healing from an injury. He had, I believe it was a fractured collarbone. I don't remember if he needed surgery, but it's great to see him back. And same thing with Kevin Rooney. Rooney got hurt. I believe he went down in practice too, which is even more unfortunate because it's practice. It's not supposed to be like that. And Peltz was boarded in a preseason game against Seattle. So I'm very much excited look uh, to his for his return to Seattle and see how that goes. I don't think that he would ever like truly go after and instigate someone, but I'm sure that he has a few words to say and I don't blame him. It's, this is something that I didn't really think of at first until I sat down and saw the Drysdale and uh, Gautier trade. Do you have a cushion now in more of a safety net to trade players? Does this, does their return, you know, Coronado doing well, Peltz returning, Shillington returning, having that veteran presence with Kevin Rooney, does this give you a cushion to make a trade? Do you feel more comfortable making a trade now than you did prior to their return just because you have something there that it has proven that they have a good NHL track record and you're not going to be losing as much ground as you would say if you did just call up the next AHL guys that were ready. It's very hard to tell. I think it would be getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, especially where we don't know where the flames are at in terms of negotiations with players like Hannafin or Tanev. And we're we're kind of of the mind that Elias and Holm is getting traded. And it's just a matter of has kind of that best offer. And I would say they do would feel more comfortable doing that with the return of Pelletier or Coronado. Because again, it is something that they can comfortably say works. I am kind of intrigued by what happens on the back end here because Eric Francis has now said twice that he assumes the Flames will re-sign Noah Hannafin and that an extension is coming. So I I do think that that is happening because Eric Francis is someone that typically the unofficial front-facing PR person. Uh, most teams have that in a reporter and that sometimes that reporter isn't always directly part of the team. It's not necessarily like a Flames reporter hired by NHL.com that, you know, the Flames have vetted and whatnot. Sometimes it's just like the longest running media person in the in the market. That's some, Sometimes they just get grandfathered into that stuff. And it's all about those who foster relationships and can make the team look the best. And that, that is all about public relations. And if you would love a public relations breakdown and how, you know, to view this team through a public relations lens, let me know. I would be happy to do a bonus episode on that because that is what I went to school for and what I have studied for the longest time. Back to, I'm just left with a big question. It feels like every day we are collecting question marks and 
trying to arrange them in order of importance because <laughs> with the flames you have nothing but question marks one will get semi answered and then three more will pop up and right here you okay no hannafin is likely to to resign what does that look like in terms of term and money are you trading chris tanev are you going to let your third pair walk? I believe most of the third pairing players are UFAs at the end of the season. So what is what is your plan defensively as well as getting stronger on the offensive front? Because, you know, you lose Elias and home, that's fine. But there's, it's not like a Goudreau or Kachuk level of loss. And that's fine. That is what it is. You know, it, it happens. But are you going to potentially look at uh, trading players like Dylan Dubé? Just because there are younger guys in the lineup that have not had 300 plus opportunities to prove themselves at the NHL level. And really at this point, anything may be an improvement above Dubé. And I just, I really like him as a person. I think that, you know, he, there's, I've never heard anyone have like a sour interaction with him, but I am starting to wonder what could become of a fourth line should, you know, they put a better player on it. Do they have more confidence in trading players now with Pelletier and Coronado and Shillington coming back? Like I say Coronado coming back, but I mean, Coronado being on, being able to move up to the Flames roster. I hope that we do get to see these three guys on the Flames at some point this season. It is just a matter of time because moves have to happen. Don Maloney said, oh, well, we'd keep everyone. Well, you're not keeping everyone. So let's let's get the ball rolling here and allow players who have earned the shot at the NHL prove to you why you want them in your organization. And Coming up next, we are going to wrap up the show with some trade talk. But for once, it doesn't involve the Flames. It's going to involve a Pacific Division rival along with Flyers who just beat the Flames. Coming up right after this. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets for your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seats, and the best price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. I love Game Time because not only do you get to see the view from your seat, but if you are a very spontaneous person like myself, you can get last minute tickets up to an hour after the event starts. And that is, that is very important <laughs> for people who run perpetually late and are spontaneous. So you can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more with the Game Time app. And with zone deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for the for big time savings. And Game Time Guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Thanks everyone for hanging out with me on today's episode of Locked on Flames. You can follow me on X at Jess Belmosto because there are always instant reactions over there because I am always online. And listen, if there is one thing being online has taught me, it's that I can host a daily podcast. So make good use of your time tonight, okay? Or I guess it's it's technically Monday night when I'm recording this. So Monday night, I get home from the gym, sit down on my computer to start recording. And what do I see? 
I think I see a fake tweet because why on earth would the Ducks trade Jamie Drysdale to the Flyers for call, uh, Cutter Gautier and a second round pick also going back to the Flyers? I thought it, I truly thought this was a fake tweet. My whole timeline did too. And then I saw that the NHL retweeted it and I was like, oh, okay, like this is this is actually a real tweet. It's not just someone that made a fake handle that looks exactly like the Ducks that has a Twitter blue account, whatever it's called. Like this is legitimately happening. And then it kind of, it came out that uh, Gautier did not want to sign with the Flyers and he just straight up refused to meet with them in their front office. You have such limited say once you are drafted. So if you are going to take advantage of, you know, not signing with a team, I mean, maybe you can give them the benefit of the doubt and just kind of let them know, hey, I'm not re-signing and don't ghost them. But Danny Breer's hand was forced here and I get it. I do. These are the business decisions that happen as a general manager. People were so excited for this kid too. So it is, it is disappointing for Flyers fans in that aspect. But on the other end, you have Jamie Drysdale, who is still young, has had a kind of shaky start to the NHL just because I think of injuries as well as it's Anaheim. Things aren't necessarily known for going smoothly there. So to me, Jamie Drysdale was someone that you were going to more than likely have in this core for a long time. And Pepper be <laughs> otherwise, because I mean, what on earth? That's why I thought it was fake because I was like, why would, how? So I wonder if something was going on with Drysdale's camp as well. And maybe uh, Gautier does sign in An Anaheim because the Flyers just traded his signing rights. So I'm very interested to see kind of what comes of this, but this is a great reminder that being an aggressive and proactive rather than reactive general manager can, can go a long way. And yes, this is, I'm th talking about this like less than an hour after it, the news broke. It's still like a good trade for both sides. And I don't necessarily think that it's a bad thing to trade players that you, you know, you, if you have a log jam at any of your positions with prospects, then you're fine to trade any one of them, especially when you are confident that some may even be better than the player that you're trading. That's the name of the game. I'm sure no hard feelings. Well, maybe Flyers fans towards, towards Cutter there, but I'm just absolutely shocked that they traded Drysdale. I have not seen any sort of reaction from Ducks reporters, just fans saying, I thought this was a fake tweet. It makes sense. There's a ton of prospects ready to make the jump. So, I mean, no one knows the Ducks better than their own fan base. And I implore you to go listen to Locked on Ducks as well as Locked on Flyers because they will both have great, uh, analysis and a breakdown of these transactions. So go ahead and check them out. I will be back with y'all on Wednesday. We are going to be bracing a horrible storm. So I am very much looking forward to having the peace of talking hockey with you all and hopefully covering a nice win from our Calgary Flames. But until then, stay safe, stay warm, stay dry, put on some chapstick, and be safe.